let's take a look at different ways we can manipulate the PowerShell environment before actually loading it. And we can do that by supplying parameters to the PowerShell.exe. Uh, you'll see in this first command, I'm just calling PowerShell.exe and supplying it the command parameter. And when I give it the command parameter, I can supply PowerShell commands for it to execute. And you'll see that it's on a single line. So if I wanted to add more code, uh, we could just put a little semicolon in there. So let's run this. And you'll see that it just runs the PowerShell code as if I entered it into a PowerShell console. So that's pretty cool. Let's hit enter. Uh, but one thing you'll notice is that if I didn't put that pause in there, it'll just run and exit immediately. Well, there's another parameter that we can use called no exit that will uh, tell PowerShell not to shut down after it is run. So you'll see now we can go and do more at the console if we wanted to. I didn't mean to do that. All right, so let's look at the next one. Execution policy. Now this is something that a lot of people have trouble with at the start. You can set the execution policy for the instance that you're running PowerShell. So in this case, I'm running PowerShell with the execution policy of restricted, but it'll only be in this PowerShell instance. So if I say get execution policy, you'll see that it's restricted because I've des designated it to be so. But if we look at um, my regular execution policy you'll see that it's still remote signed so that's a way to alter the execution policy uh, for that instance of PowerShell now this is for PowerShell version 2 and higher I don't know why you'd be using one but maybe you are but this does not exist in one so that's just something to keep note of but if you want to uh, provide PowerShell a file or a PowerShell file to execute, then you would use the file parameter and then give it the location to that file. And since it doesn't exist, we're just going to move on. Now, you'll notice in the other examples, uh, PowerShell started with a little logo at the top here. If you want to get rid of that logo, you can supply the no logo option, and that will start PowerShell without its logo. And you just get this clean little screen. Okay, so PowerShell has profiles, kind of the same way that you have a Windows profile that you log into, and it opens up all of your programs that you've told it to open up on startup. PowerShell has something similar, and you can go and set up your own profiles to load certain things and to uh, uh, create certain variables, but that can cause problems sometimes. So if you want to load uh, PowerShell without any of your profile information being loaded then you would supply the no profile and load it up and it'll just be a regular PowerShell instance alright so let's go on to the next one PowerShell starts in multi-threaded mode by default if you wanted to start in a single thread then you would supply the dash STA parameter and that will prevent it from uh, opening up in multi-threaded version. Now this is really cool. If you have compatibility issues and let's say you need to start uh, something up in PowerShell 2 because maybe it's not working with PowerShell 3 or 1 and something's not working with 2, you can supply the version number with this version parameter. And let's take a look at what happens there. So if we say get host, you'll notice that the version is 2. But if I just open up my regular PowerShell and we say get host we're running PowerShell 3 so that's a really great way to uh, alter the version of PowerShell that you're starting in case you need some sort of uh, backward compatibility uh, so let's go ahead and close these and then this is something that I'm sure lots of people are familiar with uh, especially in, in the batch days where uh, you would have some sort of window pop up and you freak out because you don't want anybody to hit control C or any buttons or or anything to mess up your batch file running well you can supply a hidden parameter in the window style now which will let PowerShell do its thing in the background and you won't actually see anything so in this case I'm providing it a maximize window style so when it starts you'll see it's it's opened up uh, much larger than you can actually see 
Um, so that is the window style, and I, I put the other uh, options right below it, normal, minimized, and hidden. Um, and those are a couple of things that I think everybody should uh, keep in mind and, and remember uh, because they might come in handy later. There's more than this. I'm going to put a link in, in the description to a Technic, TechNet article that has the rest of them. And, and I would suggest uh, anyone interested to go and, and take a quick look at what options you have there because you never know when uh, one of these might come in handy. So it's, it's good to have them uh, fresh in your mind. Uh, and that's it. So have fun um, changing the way PowerShell starts up and, and doing different things with your environment. Thanks for watching.